Good morning, everybody. Cold, rainy mornings, small crowds. Welcome to Jackson Community Church, the church of five minutes is soon enough. We're not even the church of just in time anymore. Now we're like five minutes afterwards is good. <laughs> so welcome. A few quick announcements for the life of the church and the community. We are upping our protection here inside. We're still keeping the windows open and the fans going, even if it gets a little chilly. But we are asking people to mask when they come in. Um, you can choose to take your mask off in the pew if you so desire, but when we're singing, you should mask up. And then we have a couple of upcoming events. First of all, our youth group is um, working with us on pumpkin people. I think I mentioned that last week. So this Monday and Friday, they're gonna be designing the heads and the costumes of all the pumpkin people. And they're creating a pumpkin patch jazz band for us. So if anybody feels like helping put up ja um, pumpkin people next Saturday, um, we will probably be placing the heads on the, the infrastructure and creating the infrastructure next Saturday. So um, email me, text me, or come find me after church if you're interested in participating in that part of things. And then we're also, next Sunday is October 3rd, and it's the traditional time in the year when we do a pet blessing in honor of St. Francis. So at 9 a.m. at the gazebo, we will be doing a pet blessing for anybody who wishes to bring their pets. Uh, please bring them leashed or, you know, if there's like a household pet like a cat, maybe bring them in a carrier so that they're safe and they don't run away. We'll have treats and blessings for you. And I think the only other thing I want to let you know is that today is, the, is an inaugural day where the deacons are doing the tech for us in the background. Chris, my husband, who you haven't seen much this year because he's always hiding uh, behind his computer, often, most often always does the tech for us. But we want to deepen and share that responsibility as we go forward because we're making this commitment to hybrid worship. So the deacons are taking on new roles. So you will fully appreciate that Sandy Lewis is um, doing all the sharing of images from Ohio. And bear with us if we have, you know, if we go a little bit slower or if you see something that is a little different. Um, we're testing it out, but this is how we grow. And we, did, we ran a, te a test and it went really smoothly and then we already came across two challenges this morning. So we know there'll be a few others, but this is what it's like to share ministry together. So we appreciate your presence and your patience as we, as we figure out how to share this part of ministry as well so that Chris can take a well-earned break, which he is doing today and can do so in the future. Right now, he's never allowed to be on vacation unless we go really, really simple. Those are our announcements for the life of the church, unless anybody else has any announcements. Anything else either here in the sanctuary or out in Zoom? I don't see anybody raising their hands or, okay, so I think we're good. Do you remember that next week is also communion? And then we're going to gather ourselves by listening to some of Alan's beautiful music, which is raised up to glory and magnify God and to gather us all into the gifts of our shared ministry together and to bring us into God's presence. So please listen and focus and breathe.
Okay, in our first sharing of the morning, we're going to put up the call to worship. And I ask you all to join me. You'll find it in your bulletin or you'll find it here on your screen. Gather us in, holy love, and hear our prayers. Gather us in, holy love, and heal our spirits. Gather us in, holy love, and open our lives to receive your way. Open our hearts, our spirits, our souls to learn your way and follow you faithfully. And now we turn to the prayers of our community to those that we lift up out loud and those that we hold in silence. We begin with prayers of concern and I will share two and then I will invite Zoom first and then Sanctuary. The first two prayers, one is for, it's a prayer of concern and hope for our neighbor, Barbie Brown, who is often seated right here in the sanctuary with us, dolled up to the nines in her hat and her jacket. She always looks awesome. She is making the transition to Florida, where most of her family lives. We prayed about this a little bit last week. The current plan as I know it is that she's coming home from rehab on Tuesday and that she will be potentially staying with friends overnight to keep her safe because her family is come flying up and going to pick her up next weekend and bring her down to Florida. So we have one week to keep Barbie safe. So we need Barbie to stay stable, stay, stay safe and upright and no falls, no accidents for four days till she is in a car with her beloved family and on her way to her new home in Florida. This is a huge change, huge change. And for this to have taken place, let me tell you, she has been wrapped around by a very loving and very dedicated group of neighbors because there's no family up here. So it's all neighbors taking care of her and they have taken her to doctor's appointments, to the emergency room, to the hospital. They're picking her up. They're making sure that they're staying with her so she doesn't get hurt. They have helped pack and empty her house for months. They've gone to the attorney with her to help her change over bank accounts and legal things and medical things. They are taking the role of family and there will be family to receive her and do this for her on the other end, but we are the ones who are here with her now. And, and so it is our community, members of our community who have wrapped her up in love. So a prayer for hope for her transition that it will, it take place safely and that she will be welcomed into a loving community where she is going. Truthfully, that's my prayer of concern, but a prayer of just hope and always ongoing attentiveness to babies who are about to be born. There are a few of them coming. David and Ginger are expecting a gr their first grandchild and, um, one of my great nieces is expecting her first baby. She did her gender reveal yesterday, so they're having a girl. So baby's coming. Life keeps happening right in the middle of everything else. Those are the prayers that I know about outside of our own community. What would you lift up? And I ask for prayers of concern, and we begin in Zoom. Are there any prayers that you wish to lift up out loud? Go ahead, Sandra. Um, Richard is due for another CAT scan on Tuesday, and we have prayers for a CAT scan that looks um, like something we can continue to live with. All right. Prayers for a livable CAT scan and prayers for what it means to be in the middle of uncertainty and the unknown with both hope and, and doubt and fear all mingled. It's the both and of illnesses like cancer. We pray for a path. Are there prayers of concern inside the community of Zoom? Prayers here in the sanctuary 
Okay, um, Alan's going to bring you the microphone, Eileen, and Kevin. I have a prayer and concern for um, members of our church, uh, Jan and John Chernick. Um, John has stopped his chemo. He is terminally ill. And Jan, who's been the caregiver, um, can barely walk. She has a walker. She's going to be scheduled for surgery in November. So I know they'd appreciate our prayers. My second one is my sister-in-law who has um, uterine cancer and will be having surgery October 4th and then staying with uh, my husband and me. So two prayers for healing within and stability and dignity and comfort all within the body of Christ. Some of these things are, as we hear, a journey that brings people to the end of their lives and how that journey will unfold is unknown. Meanwhile, those who love them also need attention. And we give thanks that there are loving family members to receive someone like your sister, Eileen, your sister-in-law, into your home to care for her while she recovers from her surgery. And Kevin, did you have a prayer? Prayer for uh, Israel, prayer for Pope Francis, prayer for African Americans and all the Africans, especially the children in Africa, the LBGQT people, prayer for them, all the churches and synagogues all over the world. And Chris and Madeline, Reverend Gail and Chris, and all the members of our church. And I just wanted to say those that <clears throat> might be contemplating suicide. It's not worth giving the gift that has been given to you by the one who loves you more than any other person. And lastly, uh, love is more precious than gold. It can't be bought. It can't be sold. I think Kevin just touched on several community members, and I hope, were you able to hear him? Tell me yes and Zoom if you could hear him. Okay. That was an incredibly inclusive prayer, Kevin, and thank you. Um, and I, I reemphasize what Kevin said about those who may be feeling enough despair or depression to have suicidal ideation or more. Um, our church is supporting several people who are having mental health challenges and body, mind, spirit. Everybody is challenged right now. Um, and the invisible toll of mental health in our community is very strong. So we ask that you will hold up neighbors that you may not even know who through body, mind, and spirit are trying to be here and stay in this world. And it is a struggle. Did you have a prayer? Um, yeah, I, I actually wanted to pray for the people that are housing challenged that mm -hmm. cannot find affordable housing. Mm -hmm. um, and that is actually a problem, not only in the Valley, but all over the state of New Hampshire. And I would like to pray for those people. Thank you, Ellen, for housing challenges. This is also a very realistic issue that we are, I mean, our, our Valley is working on it. Communities all over the place that we know, we know it's a challenge and the solutions will not be quick to come. So, prayer and action, attention, and when you hear about things that you can help with where it comes to supporting or encouraging housing varieties, um, know that it, it's your neighbors that you're trying to help find a foothold in a home here. We turn to prayers of joy, delight, celebration, because we carry these heavy prayers and we need to be reminded about small and simple daily joys like babies that are coming into the world. Um, so we ask you for the things that give you joy or cause you to be grateful or to celebrate. And we're gonna start here in the sanctuary again and then we'll move back out to Zoom. So anybody here, Kevin's got joy, that's good or something. Something's making him smile. He's over in the corner sitting in the sunlight. He found the sunniest part of the church. Um, 
grateful for the sunshine, of course, and for all the dogs that love me and all the birds who love me. Um, the rivers, the mountains, the woods, especially God Almighty. And remember to follow your heart. Other prayers here in the sanctuary of celebration, joy, gratitude, anything that makes you happy is good. Um, I'm, I'm going to just share. Um, well, I'm just really thankful for music um, mm -hmm. and collaboration and a lot of people that are now singing. So keep singing. <laughs> All right. There's no to our choir <laughs> who faithfully show up. Prayers in Zoom of gratitude, celebration, joy, anniversaries. Kate's got one. Go ahead and unmute, Kate. I got to go to um, the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs this week, visiting my brother in Denver. And um, it's the most exquisite place of red rock outcroppings I've ever seen. It was just fabulous. It really was God's garden. Mm -hmm. I, know, I think all around us, we have sanctuaries that are amazing and very natural. I know people going out into the woods every Sunday to find their church too. Other prayers of celebration or gratitude. Um, Sandy, go ahead. Just, yeah. Um, as always, thankful to spend additional time with my mom and my sister. Yesterday, we went to a, a very unique location. It was a Renaissance village. It was Highland weekend, but you wouldn't know that. It was still Renaissance totally. Um, but uh, very cool. But also for the um, thankful for learning to stop and enjoy the roses. On the way to this village, we saw a car show and a um, like a farmer's market, and we went, "Oh, that'd be cool!" And on the way home, we made ourselves stop there instead of just driving by. So we're learning to embrace spontaneity, spontaneity, which is hard for a planner like me. So <laughs> it's good. <laughs> new, new skills of spontaneity and the joys they bring. Work for others, the new skill of planning and the joy it brings. <laughs> Both are good. Other prayers of joy, celebration, gratitude. Well, I'll say that I got to go on a walk yesterday and along the walk, um, which was up the further end of Carter Notch Road, lots of trees turning, the reds are starting to come out. And Lori Kinsey had invited a couple of us from the eight o'clock to, if we wanted to borrow apples, which we're not gonna give back from her trees. So we did, we, um, we borrowed trees and that was special. So um, for the gift of the harvest and what it brings, the abundance of the 50 year high and trees and apples that they're giving us and farmers markets like sandy said and pets i think you know i think we especially if there's going to be a pet blessing next week but i realize like for instance sandy is cherishing her um memory of her cat molly and i believe that other people are are handing over pets to their children and things like that. So there's some very beloved and very familiar um, pets that have been part of our lives who are making their own transitions. And for the gift that animals and creation give to us, we give thanks. Any other prayers from within Zoom? Okay, you guys are quiet today. You know, someday I'm going to call on everybody that never says anything. And I'm going to get you to make a poster with six words. These are the things I'm happy about. And you can hold it up and you still won't have to say anything, but you can hold up your poster and we'll know what you're happy about. Then I ask that you will pray with me and then we will hold silence and then we will go to the Lord's Prayer. We begin with this gathering prayer. Oh, holy God, we open the windows of the church and we throw open the portals of our hearts, our minds, our lives, 
And we ask that you will be the wind that moves through our buildings, our bodies, this world. That you will hear us and bear our words into your own being and respond as you are able. Sometimes in ways that are obvious to us and sometimes in ways that we can't imagine or we cannot see until we look backwards and we realize that you were present all along. We ask that you will be the healing force for those that we lift up every week, for Barry and Jan, for Eileen's sister-in-law, for Jan and John Chernick, for those who grieve, for Scamp and Huntley and Mary and Sasha, for Barbie in her transition, for Richard, for John, for neighbors that go unnamed due to privacy and confidentiality, but who have turned to us also for support, for those who in body, mind, and spirit are in pain, for whole parts of the world that cry out for healing, for justice, for compassion, for hope. May you be the presence that find its way into these places and creates a way where it seems none is possible. And when things are too heavy, O oh holy God, O oh love that is restless, that won't let us be, remind us that when it feels that heavy, we are not carrying it alone and we are invited to turn every bit of it over to you to say, I can't do this, it's too much. How can this happen? What do I do? What is possible? To breathe, to center ourselves, to find you in this place or in other places and give ourselves over into love and take respite on a Sabbath. Get some sleep. Find some joy, take a walk, eat an apple, stop at a farmer's market, celebrate a new child coming into the world. And on the other side of it, when we are renewed, only then pick up and look at the ways that we can be part of your love in the world, but we don't have to do it all. Choose what we can do in simple, simple ways for each other. And know that love is big because it is all of us and more than all of us. Holy Spirit, hear now our silence and hear the words that we will then speak together. We offer you our silence now. And holy God, I ask that everybody would unmute and that you would hear all of our voices as all of our voices of our brothers and sisters all over the world are lifted up in these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, will be done. done. on earth, on earth as, it is as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this, give us day, this day, day our daily bread. Daily bread. And forgive and us our sins, sins, our sins as, as we forgive those who sin against, against us. Lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from evil. evil. For thine is the, For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, and the glory. glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing together now. And so if you are able, we're a small but mighty group here in the sanctuary. <laughs> and Alan's been our song leader, so he's sort of cueing us so when we know when to start singing. Um, feel free to stand if you're here in the sanctuary and you're able to. 
and you can find the song, it's, if I'm correct, it's on 102, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. And Alan, just give us one minute because we're putting up the words on the screen too. There we go. All right, go for it. Having uh, Alan sing with us helps us cue us in a little bit, so um, yay. I, I know you guys probably can't hear him, but we can see him singing or hear him singing in the sanctuary, so it helps us be unified, which we were struggling with a couple weeks ago. We have a few readings for you from scripture. You will be familiar by now with the first line of the Shema because we've been reading it for a few weeks. And today we will be focusing on one word out of the second line of the Shema. And in the scripture selections that we have, we're going to show you how the Shema shows up in the gospel. The first reading comes from Deuteronomy and it is what inspired the Shema in the Jewish faith now a prayer in the morning and the evening for Jewish practitioners. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. From the Gospel of Luke, he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. From the Gospel of Mark, Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And from the Gospel of John, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. This I command you, love one another. From 1 John, beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. And finally, from 1 John chapter 4, So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. So end the readings. I ask now that you will pray with me. O oh, holy God, 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You will have seen if you receive the email from church that the focus today is on the word ahava, which means love. Many of us have heard about the word agape. It was the final word that Pogen preached on in Bartlett just a few weeks ago. And that is the Greek word. Agape is the Greek word for holy love, an interconnectedness, a reciprocity that is bigger than ourselves, that is larger than anything we can imagine and encompasses more than any human could possibly undertake in loving. Ahava in Hebrew, which comes from the Hebrew scriptures largely, is a similar word. It means to love. And in Deuteronomy, it was being used by Moses to lay out the strictures for how the people should live together with one another. But as there is no particular creed in the Jewish faith that states exactly what they believe, the Shema becomes almost one of the closest statements to a statement of faith that they make in their prayers day and night. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. This, out of all the things that were written down and collected and handed down orally, that became the teachings of the Hebrew people, the Jewish people. This was the line, this prayer. It was distilled into the one starting point that was common to all Jewish people, including Jesus, who was raised by faithful Jewish parents, dedicated in a Jewish temple, made pilgrimages year in and year out with his followers to the rhythm of the great Jewish holidays and festivals. And when he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And there were hundreds of laws in the Jewish tradition, but this was the one statement that had been pulled out to start their prayers. This is the prayer that he gave to us, the stricture that he gave to us to say, if you have to follow a commandment, this is the one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the Lord alone. But the Shema doesn't end there. It goes on and it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And when it says love, it says ahava. And like so many other words, it doesn't translate easily into English. Ahava, much like the word Shema, which we said, hear, pay attention, take notice, positioned people not only to notice what was being called, of, called for them to look at, to notice, to hear, but to respond to and to take action. Ahava has much the same active connotation. It is not romantic love that you would celebrate on Valentine's Day. It is more than philios, friendship. It is more than ethical doing. It is love. It is deep and abiding love. And it is the expectation that when someone says, Ahava, you will see in the other to whom you are asked to give Ahava dignity, and respect, and it is turned first and foremost to our God. When it is used throughout the Hebrew scriptures, Ahava talks about the relationship of people to their leader, people to their king, to their Lord, to the one who is responsible for taking care of them, but it is also spoken of in a covenantal way between partners, spouses, husband and wife as the contract, the agreement, the deep abiding partnership that I have turned to you and I have chosen you and I am making a promise to you beyond 
beyond life itself. I will see you through the good and the bad, and I will love you even though there are parts of you that are hard to live with and hard to like sometimes, but I love you more deeply than I like you, and my promise goes deeper and you can get it wrong and get it wrong and get it wrong and i will keep come knocking at your door the door of your heart the door of your life and i will say i've chosen you do you choose me back this is the love the ahava that god has for the people of israel and chooses for the all the children of god's kingdom and that is you and me and people all over this world. Christ expanded what Ahava meant and made it very real for us. Father Richard Rohr asked in his meditations on this commandment, how could I possibly love God? How can you love an entity, a deity, that's too big to imagine, larger than the ocean, as eternal as the endless number of stars, without beginning, without end, beyond our reach, even though we believe and are told that God is present here with us. How do you love the idea of a love that big? And Father Richard Rohr said, the only way I can imagine loving God is by looking at how Christ combined the two commandments. He used the conjunction and, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Father Richard Rohr says, I can only imagine that the only way I can touch loving God and following that commandment, that ahava that is too big for me to embody, is to love those that God loves. And so if you feel overwhelmed by the idea that you're supposed to give this amazing commitment to God's self, and you'll probably fall on your face again and again because who among us is going to get that right all the time? The invitation as it was lived out in Christ's life and passed down generation to generation so that we modeled it in the way that we are loving Barbie Brown and loving each other and bringing our pets to be blessed and showing up again and again, even when we don't agree, even when once some of us believe in vaccination and some don't, some mask and some don't, we're on different sides of politics, we're on different sides of almost everything. We show up and we say, these two are children of God. And I don't have to like the fact that we disagree on very primary issues. I don't understand how you can think or feel that way. But what I'm told to do is to love you. That doesn't mean I have to hug you and kiss you. It doesn't mean I ha don't have to walk down an, an aisle with you and marry you. It means I need to remain in community with you and I have to find a way to do that. And it is hard, hard work. And in this time and in this place, we are being called to the ahava of the hard work of being people in community. And our assignment as much as it is to respond to holy love, is to see that the covenant that God made is not made with just you because you feel right about this. It is for everyone. God didn't look and say, oh, they voted this way, so I'm with them. God didn't say they pray this way or they sing that way or their skin is this color or they only love the same sex or different sex people, and so I'm with them. God loves every child born into this world and god's love is bigger than any limit or any door that we could slam upon it you don't have to like everything that the people around you do but they are children of god and ahava says you will love each other because god has chosen you to be worthy of love
and there is no way that any of us could possibly be worth the love that is given to us because we get it wrong again and again and again, but we are, we are worth it because God says so, because we were created as the children of God. And it doesn't matter if you got it wrong yesterday or this morning, you get to try again. And so do the people that are part of your community. As wrong as you think they are, they deserve your respect, your presence, and for you, for me, to find a way to sit at the table, to have a conversation, and if the best you can do is be present and listen, then to listen. Last week, I stopped to get air in my tires, and I stopped down in Massachusetts at a place that has been working on my cars for over 25 years. I didn't know how the business owner felt about everything. But there are things he doesn't disagree with, that he doesn't agree with. And so he likes to come skiing up here, but he pulled his season pass because he doesn't agree with the policies of the business owners up here. And he started telling me about all the reasons why he's making choices that I don't understand, but are important to him. And he started out angry, not at me, but at the people that made policies that made it impossible for him to come up here and have the fun he wants to have, to get away from the pressures of his job and his life and have respite. And I stood and I listened and I didn't agree. But at the end of it, at the end of it, this man who is a father and a husband said to me, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to believe. And you know what I am? I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. I listened until the anger and the denial and the differences that we have about very important issues melted away. And underneath was a man who trusts me enough to say, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm scared. We may not understand people who are different from us, but trust that they know how to love and they're doing their best to take care of those they love. And it may not be in a way that you agree, but perhaps if you stand and you listen long enough, what you will hear is that someone is afraid and that they needed to say that out loud and be heard. He thanked me for listening to him. And then I drove away and he went back to his work day. Ahava is not easy. You don't have to come to consensus over everything. But underneath is the humanity that God put into this world with all of its differences and its diversities. And in our time, we are called to find a way to live together. And we do it in our corner. We ask our leaders to do it in their corners and their parts of the world. And day by day, we create Ahava and honor Ahava, the covenant of love that is bigger than us. Thanks be to God. We're going to continue our tradition of restoring the doxology to our service. So at this moment, I remind you, your faithful giving helps us stay alive. It is Ahava in this world. And so we invite you to place your offering in the plates, in the basket, to go to jxncc.org and make your contribution that way. Do what you are able so that we may do what we are able to do. You will find the doxology on page 44 of your red hymnal. You may stand if you're able. And if you're in Zoom, you will find it here on your screen.
act of courage for me to sing out loud, because I don't usually sing on pitch, but I'm trying. Um, You may turn now to page 68 in your hymnals. First, I'm going to pray a prayer of dedication while Sandy is um, finding the words for the next song. Oh, holy God, we ask that you will receive the gifts that we offer to you and that you will help us find and create Ahava, and that you will do so with the offerings that we have given into plates and into baskets and buckets, but also with our presence here and our presence out in the world that is yours, that you have given into our keeping. Bless our offerings. And so, friends, Let's sing together, though I may speak. So um, Alan will play that live, and if you're here, you'll find the words in your bulletin, and otherwise, Sandy is working right now on finding, there they go, they're coming up on the screen for all of us.
sisters, go in peace, go with Ahava in your being and in your doing. Go in peace. Thank you.